I've had solar for more than four years now, and I'm going to tell you all the stats about my ownership and whether the SunGrow inverter has worked well. Same with the Jinko Tiger 390 watt panels on the roof. Would I get the same thing again or differently? Would I tilt the panels instead of having them installed flat? Should they be facing north, south, east, west, or multiple directions? All the tips that will help you, I'm going to lay them out here one by one and also show you exactly my savings based on what it would have cost if I used the same amount of electricity from mains grid power instead of my solar for the last four and a bit years. That's 1,554 days so far of having solar. Let's go. Please contribute. It really helps my independent, honest journalism. What Solar Analytics is all you got at is showing you long-term savings. So according to this, and I put in all my electricity tariffs and the changes over time, since we first got solar a bit over four years ago, it saved us over $5,600 on an initial investment of $10,000. So it saved well over $1,000 a year. That's pretty good. And considering how long the warranty is on the inverter, 10 years, and the panels, like ages, I can't even remember. I think it's 20 or 30 years for different parts of the panel warranty. This solar system will save us way more than what we paid for it but also mean we get energy independence and no bill shock. That is awesome. Now I'll show you on screen a little bit of the installation process of our solar panels a bit over four years ago. We got a really reputable, high quality local solar installer called Paul from Brightside Electrical to install our inverter and do the wiring and install the panels. I'll show you on screen what panels we got at that time. I chose Jinko and I'm really happy with those Jinko panels. I think that it's not worth paying extra money for super premium solar panels because you're just not going to get value for money ROI from them. It'll take a lot longer to get your money back. And the performance difference between budget quality solar panels like Jinko and super premium solar panels is very small. So you're spending that much more money for that much more performance. It just doesn't make sense. And do they work? Sure, they do work. They've worked well over four years without any problems whatsoever. So I can definitely say Jinko solar panels, big thumbs up. What about the SunGrow inverter? Again, it's a budget inverter. It doesn't have the reputation of a Fronius, for example, but it doesn't have a price of a Fronius either. It's worked again perfectly well. And it's provided us heaps of stats. There's no subscription fees. The app has worked well. It's not a fancy app, but it gives us heaps of statistics and any alerts for issues such as when the Wi-Fi has problems because our NBN is using old HFC Foxtel cable and sometimes drops out. So the inverter tells us that it's dropped connectivity. Um, yeah. Pretty awesome. SunGrow inverters, Jinko panels are a great budget solution. You don't need to spend tons and tons more money on a fancy brand string inverter and fancy, really expensive solar panels. I'm perfectly happy with our choice and I would buy a SunGrow inverter and Jinko solar panels again if I had the choice and I was putting solar panels on my roof right now. Actually mentioning Jinko solar panels, and yes, they have not paid me anything for this. I paid for my whole solar installation and the inverter myself. We're probably going to get some extra Jinko panels on a spare bit of roof and connect them to our home battery, which will be hopefully installed in the next few months. There's a huge queue, as you can imagine, because of the cheaper home batteries federal rebate. So we're waiting to get in the queue and get permission from Ausgrid to install our home battery. Then we'll have some even higher capacity Jinko solar panels on our roof, DC connected to the battery, so it can have black start, blackout capability. And those panels I'm researching now, they might be up to 600 watts, so that's pretty amazing. How much innovation there's been just in four years that solar panels are available, easily installable onto houses at not that much cost, 
for 600 watts each. Wow. That's the sun setting west over my shoulder. Why is that important? Because the sun rises in the east and sets in the west over the day. A lot of panels ideally should be facing north, but you'll also get a huge amount of value, especially if you're on a time of use tariff or a demand tariff, if you have quite a decent number of panels facing west, because that's usually when most cut people are being forced onto time of use tariffs where they have peak periods of power pricing like I do on the Osgrid network from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. So having panels facing west while the sun is setting means that the panels generate the optimum amount of electricity in the afternoons, in summer and in winter. So that'll refill your battery or allow you to time your appliances like dryers and dishwashers, etc., to run while electricity is being generated to the maximum by your solar panels. Trees are really awesome. They generate oxygen and provide a home for birds and possums and all kinds of other creatures. We need trees, but solar panels do not like trees, especially in winter when the sun happens to be going behind the trees. That means that a lot of solar energy is blocked from reaching your panels. Try and locate your panels on your roof in a place where they won't be blocked by tree shade for the majority of the year. Or if possible, try and use optimizers. Talk with your solar panel installer and see if something like a Tigo optimizer might be a, a good choice. Otherwise, you have to figure out and know in advance, talk with your solar panel installer. If you know you're guaranteed to have some deep shade from trees, during winter, then plan ahead and know that, for example, in June and July, you're going to have less solar generation into your house inverter and battery, if you've got a battery. That's just how it is. You can't just get rid of the trees. We need the trees. Unfortunately, yeah, their shade will impact your solar generation. If you're completely surrounded by trees, it may be the case that it's not worth having solar panels at all. If your house is so deeply shaded that it hardly gets any sun on the roof at all, yeah, probably isn't worth getting solar. Might be worth getting a home battery instead. Have a look at some of my videos in the description. I've got some tips about choosing a home battery and fill up the battery in an off-peak and then use it during peak instead. Some of you might be wondering, why did I choose a small independent solar installer? Well, there's a good reason for that. I don't like recommending solar installers that use subcontractors because not all of them, but unfortunately, quite a few jobs done by solar system subcontractors are of mediocre quality, sometimes really bad quality. If you're dealing with a solar installer who actually owns their own business and either does the install themselves or monitors the install and has staff, a small team that does the install themselves, you're almost always going to get a far better quality job. It's not going to be the most cheapest job, but you'll have fewer problems. So a lot of times I've found people who get solar systems by the cheapest possible solar company that uses the cheapest possible solar contractors, they get issues like a lot of broken roof tiles, roof leaks caused by areas not being sealed properly, shoddy electrical work. There's a lot of problems you can avoid by choosing a small independent solar installer company that's got a track record of knowing the houses in your area and how they're built and doing a quality job without rushing to leave instantly. They'll stick around like Paul did to connect my inverter to the internet so I had the SunGrowI solar cloud app and get it running and show me how it works. So you'll get a better quality of service by choosing an independent smaller solar company usually. Not always, but most of the time you'll get much better quality than a subcontractor who doesn't care so much about the job because it's not their company name that's on the invoice. Now, I promised detailed stats, and this is where I'm going to show you. I'm going to scroll through last year and show you very quickly how much solar generation there was 
on different months of the year. So you can get an idea of how much it changes. This is in Sydney, for example. You're going to get more solar generation in Queensland and less in Tasmania. That's just because of where you're located in the country and the angle of the sun. But generally speaking, you're going to get the most solar generated in summer and the least in winter with local differences based on how many trees you have in your area and whether they're in line with where the sun is at a lower angle during winter or other parts of the year or specifically certain parts of the day even. I know a friend who lives in uh, Olympic Park and they have a solar system for ages and they have a big tree right next to their house so that in the early morning for a couple hours, they get a lot less solar generation than they would otherwise. Anyway, here are the stats. This is the homepage of my SunGrow Ice Solar Cloud app. As you can see, it's late afternoon and solar panels are generating two and a half kilowatts of electricity. Half of that going to the house, or actually a third of it is going to the house and two thirds is going to the grid. The yield today, because it's middle of July in winter, is only 15 kilowatt hours in total. Ignore the revenue, I don't enter the cost of electricity into my inverter. That's the dashboard. And what it shows is, you can have a look at your stats over the, all the years of your ownership. SunGrow is really good that way. And they don't need to make you pay any subscription fees or any other annoying things to get access to this. You can have a look at your daily stats, your weekly stats, monthly stats, yearly stats. You can get graphs, which are pretty good. And for all the stats, they'll break it down by color into PV, which is the solar generated, blue grid energy purchased, blue feed-in tariff, that's the negative direction for feed-in tariff and positive direction for purchased, and orange for load as well. As you can see, over the lifetime of this system, which is just over 1,554 days, it's generated 48.4 megawatt hours of electricity, so 48,400 over that time kilowatt hours the load has been a bit less than half of that ignore that again i haven't entered the correct pricing into the i've fed in a lot of electricity into the grid but that's going to drop a lot it's very soon because i'm going to get a home battery watch out for that video coming up so i'll be using a lot more of our own electricity generated from solar after the sun sets, thanks to the home battery. Because feed-in tariff now is like five cents from our electricity provider. It's not really worth it anymore. And during the time we've had solar, we've purchased a bit over 8.9 megawatt hours of electricity, so 8,900 kilowatt hours. This is a good example of midsummer top production of the solar system. It's generated 58.6 kilowatt hours of electricity on 14th of December, 2024. There was a load of 20.6 kilowatt hours. And we fed into the grid 41.5 kilowatt hours. Let's have a look and we purchased three and a half kilowatt hours. As you can see in this good graph, it generated lots of electricity peaking in the middle of the day at around 7.3 kilowatt hours generated at peak. And looking here, you can see that the electricity use was all underneath the orange curve. The orange curve is solar generation and the tan color is the load. That's exactly what you wanna see. Most of the load occurring during the solar generation time of day. That means instead of earning a paltry few cents for feeding electricity into the grid, you get to use it yourself and save 30, 40, 50, 60 cents per kilowatt hour, which you would have had to pay for grid electricity 
if you didn't have solar. That's the way to maximize solar savings. As much as possible, keep your load inside the solar generation curve during the middle of the day, mid-morning and afternoon. This is an app called Solar Analytics. What it does is give you lots of useful stats about your solar system and also most importantly, it analyzes your solar system compared to the data of other solar systems in your neighborhood to tell you, is it performing as expected? So this is really useful. Actually, a couple of years ago, we had a roof issue and something was covering one of the panels and Solar Analytics told me a couple of days later and I got up there and I realized that a roof repairer had left part of a tarp covering one of the panels, which is obviously not a good idea. And so I got them to remove the tarp from that area and put it away. Without Solar Analytics telling me that, I would not have known. And it's not easy to see that part of the roof because it's tilted in a way that it's only accessible by a very tall ladder. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos. It really helps me make more videos like this for you. And have a look at the suggested videos up above. I'm pretty sure you'll like those as well. Thanks, and see you later.